Bro fist to you all. Good afternoon on this fine Friday afternoon. My God, it's been a hell of a week. Not only in the sweltering heat, but we hit one of our goals. We managed to complete every single raid in Guild Wars 2. We reached the finale in a, uh, I would like to say a dramatic style, but that wouldn't be the case. And for the last few days, we have been fully engrossed into Final Fantasy 16, courtesy of Mr. Yoshi P. Sending us the game early. We've been playing through it. We've got a good, probably, what? Uh, it's 27 hours or something in the game at the moment. And it's still unlocking new things for us to try. New things to do. And maybe one day they'll uh, allow us to buy the music in the game. But they, who knows? Who knows what mysteries await us? But for those of you waiting uh, patiently for that PC release in uh, probably 12, 18 months time... Uh, it will come at some point, I have absolutely no doubts, but we are currently running a PS5 giveaway. So if you're part of the live chat, or if you're watching this on YouTube, or listening on Spotify, or whatever, if you drop into our chat and use exclamation points PS5, you will have the entry to get away. But it will be closing on Sunday. I'm just letting you know, it will be closing. Uh, so uh, just letting you know now, you can get access to it, and you can do good stuff. You will get a link, as you can see there. We are giving away a PS5. And for most of you, like 9 out of the 10 of the options will be just immediately clickable and you'll get them done. But that's not why you're here right now. We are running late. It's half past four uh, as we were in the longest cutscene that uh, FF16 had to offer so far. <laughs> it's like 25 minutes of straight cutscene. Uh, it was good stuff, though. It was very, very good stuff. Uh, but it was one of those things. So, uh, today I've got a lot of stories in front of me. Uh, oh, let's start with somebody being frigging useless that sounds fun uh i like that kind of thing <coughs> this is what uh bex is telling me here she says that all the stories are good and uh, so i can take my free pick of what she likes but if you ever want to send us a tale and you want to uh join into drama time feel free and just send us an email of whatever happened to you uh to um drama at preachgaming.com it's as simple as that to get involved and be good and if you want your name in one of the stories these are the names of our wonderful website supporters who have supported drama time now for many many years so if you ever check out our website and plus any twitch subs do get access to all little bits and bobs i believe chris has a behind the scenes of a very silly day going up on there next few days and twitch subs get that as just part of your being a sub a superation story of a rock Okay. Superation story. And the name for today shall be Mav Mav Mavinair? Mavinair. I'm going with Mavinair. Or Mavinar. Mavinar will be our name for today. Mavinar will be our hero. Oh, I've switched the boxes up. God damn it. Classic. Jam. <laughs> Mavinar. There we go. Fixed. Fixed. I fixed it very quickly. Wrong boxes again. You know what it is? They're upside down in my list of boxes. I'm going to change that now. There you go. I've changed it. And it will never be a problem ever, ever again because they were upside down in there. The name box was above the title box. Either way, here we go. Let's have some fun, guys. Hello, preacher and wonderful chat. It is I, <laughs> the rat. No, it is not. It is the author of the Tibia Clueless Criminal Story. Before I began this tale from another realm, I want to clarify that the land house wasn't actually my... Oh, this is where your dad had you farming. Yeah, I remember this. His dad got all his friends in to farm for him. I, I'm creating a land center, guys. Just leave your accounts logged in. Uh, it was a place that people paid to... Uh, the land house wasn't actually my house. It was a place that people paid to use the computers to play games online and so on. They paid per the time they wanted to use the computers there. It was like an internet cafe sort of thing and uh, turned to be our guild headquarters. It was a public place and was known for being the Tibia place. Mostly people were there to play. So that's how the guy from the enemy guild showed up. Okay, okay. We did think he'd show up at his per per permanent place of residence. But now, I wish to take you to a game you're more familiar with than Tibia. It would be the wonderful world of Eorzea. In Final Fantasy XIV. In a time where Duty Finder nor Party Finder existed. 
You had to farm your parties screaming in shout chat. Is this true? The game didn't launch with those things? I had no idea. Is that actually a true? Parties were formed using shout chat. Or you had to have friends to play connections, etc. From a time where if you played on a PS3 or using a controller, you were insta-kicked and bullied. Before some people that use control uh, that use controller judge me guilty already because I started in Shadowbringers because it started in Shadowbringers Plus. Back then the controller support was absolute ass. It was from a time where we had to make a goddamn line in a quest to Thanalan because it was so broken and bugged that if we make anything else, the NPC was sent to oblivion. And yes, I have a screenshot saved to this day. Of us attempting to complete one quest. Uh, he has provided said screenshot. Of them all in a row. This looks like hardcore World of Warcraft. Is what it looks like. This looks exactly like how people play in hardcore World of Warcraft. For our audio listeners. It is many many characters. All stood in a stupid line. Waiting to talk to an NPC. <clears throat> Very fun. Very fun. I like it. The year I'm talking about was 2013. The game had just released. I had a bunch of free time being in my 14 years of age after I had left Tibia. I just started playing this game with some of my friends. All of them were 10 plus years older than me. At first I thought this game was weeb trash. And it was also for pussies. It had no PvP open world stuff. I tried to make my dad play. But after he got banned from Tibia, he just went back to FF11. And there I was with two friends in Eorzea. I made myself a gladiator, started in Uldar, and bam, got level 30. And I had the power to be able to read, which I heard you lack, Mike. Funny fucker. Uh, So I read (laughs) the tooltip. Saying that I could get a paladin as long as I had Kundra level 15. I hate healers. So I ignored that and kept doing my main MSQ and jumped into a dungeon. Everybody was the worst you can ever imagine in the first few weeks of the game. But no one cared about me being a level 33 gladiator. After that, I felt like something was missing though. And I just went and leveled a healer. It turned out it was indeed awful for the first few levels. Throwing rocks into the mobs to finish my hunting log. I couldn't even join a dungeon. But then, then I hit level 15. I ran straight up to the level 30 quest to make myself a paladin. I was feeling powerful. I was going to raid. I rushed through level 50 with my friends and there I was, psyched, pumped, ready to raid, everything. I searched, how do I make a group in Final Fantasy 14? So I went off to Limsa Laminsa. And started to make my own static. Back then, Limsa was a legit trade post. There was no one ERPing. There would be people there selling their wares, trying to make groups and so on. Not the pile of shit that role players and furries use it for nowadays, anyway. <laughs> I made my static. It turns out I had to only recruit one player from the game. Because the warrior of my group had friends who could come along with us. And then, we have the star of this tale. Mavenar. You know, Mavenar was a dragoon. He was one of the warrior's IRL friends. He was a fantastic guy, really cool to be around, but Mavenar had a condition. It's known as being shit. And I got to know that our very first raid day. I've never seen anybody got hit so much. Even like AoEs that took 20 minutes to cast, he would still get hit by them. But we were hitting the DPS checks. We clearly passed easy with pugs. But something was strange. I thought, you know what? It's okay. We're all new to this game. We're all terrible. This guy will improve as we all improve and we all make mistakes together. But I was wrong. I learned to know it as the curse of the dragoon. A fun fact, we had to do our first raid tier of Coil undergeared because they delayed the first alliance raid. The alliance was supposed to be a support way to get gear, another way to get a good item level items, not the filler bullshit that we had. But the community liked the idea of doing the raids undergeared, 
as it would apparently present some sort of challenge. So the Alliance kept releasing in filler patches to this day and serves zero purpose gear-wise. By the by, we beat the raids. The months went by and then it released the final raid tier. The coil where the big boys wait for us. Neil, Bahamut, Twintania. It turns out Twintania was a buggy mess to the point the RNG determined if you killed it or not. But the fight was fantastic. But then, my friends, there was Neil. Neil was harder than Bahamut back then. And Neil was where the problems began. Our Dragoon, Mavenar. He got a name through the years of how bad he was. He began to go in the nickname The Rock. Because somehow, as a Dragoon, he was able to hit less than a Summoner's Titan. And this was an achievement all the way that he could do. He did not know how to avoid anything. So we just called him The Rock. Because he just stands still in every AoE. And somehow because of seven other players reached the end line. Just like Patrick's Rock winning a race in Spongebob. You know, Neil, when she changes phases. There is just a hell of a heal. That sometimes the White Mage had Cleric Instance up. It was a spell back in the day for healer that while active made you do more damage. Just like the tank stance, the way it worked to activate and deactivate. But cleric stance cut your healing potency to zero. So casting a cure three or something like that will make you do a hundred potency heal. Sometimes it happened during raids. Healers forgot about it and we just got obliterated. But that wasn't the case for Mavina. For some reason, some weird reason, he started dying more. More than normal. He started dying way more than normal to raid damage and dots. He wasn't standing in an AoE like always. He was just there smashing buttons and dying. We couldn't figure it out. What was it? So in the end, we had to start asking him what the problem was. Mavana, Mavana, friend, Mavana. How are you the only one that's dying here? Don't know, mate. I haven't got a clue. I reckons, though, it's probably because I'm not getting healed. But he was the only one who was dying. We played from back then probably already. Players who played back then probably understood what was happening. So I started watching him and inspecting him. Death after death after death. It turns out, Mavenar was using a certain spell. Every single time he could. Which included every single time there was raid damage. The spell was called Blood for Blood. I need to explain this skill to you. The skill back then gave you a damage increase. But also... <laughs> Made every single type of damage taken do 20%. Oh, made every single one of your damage spells do 20% damage to you. I asked Mavenar, why are you using blood for blood right before every big damage event? Which he answered. Makes me do more damage, mate. I read online that you press it during your opener because we need more DPS in it. Everyone just sat in silence. And then the laughing started. Our healers then announced that they had spent the last 20 pulls trying to keep him alive. And those healers just face palmed. To the point where we could probably hear the smack on their foreheads. I explained to him about the debuff. And that's what made it worse. He knew. He was fully aware. It gives more DPS though. So you just need to give me like some more mitigation or something. Like stone skin maybe. Stone skin was a healer skill that usually we save for tank busters. And ones about piercing damage or true damage. 
basically it's basically a tank bus that ignores every single type of defense or mitigation and we were using it for that yes back then you could receive a tank buster for 10,000 or 20 plus because of rng Mavenar then told us that he had to use this spell because it was part of his rotation and he this is how he does damage the thing is we didn't even pass back then we didn't clear it for two months and one day Mavenar had to leave because he was moving irl so he stepped out of the raid and we recruited a pug also a dragoon we one shot nail the next pull we killed bahamut the same night like it was nothing I started to think that Mavenar, the rock, wasn't just a bad player. I think he was actually a reverse signal or a backpedal. The veteran player who had joined us told me that my entire static was a problem for me because I was playing pretty well and I should aim for a better team. I wanted to kill stuff, but I also wanted to raid with my friends and I was pretty sure it wasn't my entire team, you see. The healer was really, really good as well. He was a top healer back then. He was able to solo heal almost every fight that the game permitted. And the warrior was pretty good too. He was number one, I'm sure. And was one of the first people to solo Titan Extreme when Heaven's Ward came out. Titan Extreme was harder than probably the entire coil. So I stuck with them. I wanted to put everybody on track to go for maybe a world first next expansion. The pug left so Mavenar could return. The whole team was pissed. How do we deal with this? He's a friend. What do we do? But it just seemed like everybody was trying and Mavenar's not. But I saw through it. It wasn't that Mavenar wasn't trying. He was trying. He was just fucking horrible. And him trying and his best just wasn't enough i was the leader i could feel the eyes looking at me they weren't going to say anything because he was their friend i had to do something oh we are not going to clear the next raid as a team i was 15 years old but i had to step up to the plate with all these people who were 10 plus years older than me they were going to get me, a 15-year-old, to teach a grown-ass 35-year-old man how to play a video game. So, in order to keep people happy, I stepped up to the plate. I opened a spreadsheet. I put in his rotation. I taught him about uptime, that if he kept running away and stayed out of melee range, he would do less damage. I taught him how to properly leave snapshots, types of different damage, get out of AoEs, the basics, and the min-max stuff for a Dragoon. I studied Dragoon until my brain exploded of information. I gathered every single thing to teach Mavenar how to not only get good, but to be the fucking best. And it just wasn't possible. I honestly started to think was Mavenar playing with a chalkboard or some sort of wooden keyboard. He just wouldn't improve. He was so bad at the game that I almost gave up in my abilities to save him. But I was 15 and I had nothing going on in my life. <laughs> but the thing is, I have nothing better to do with my time. So I persisted. I will get this player better than ever before. The static was starting to whisper me. They were pissed at his performance in every extreme. And how an outsider, who we just pugged in two minutes, was outperforming him so hard. Pugs weren't possible to be, shouldn't be better than our organized team. The pug was the same job actually made the static a little bit upset to see we basically one shot this boss and Bahamut fell so easily and had to see that Mavenar came back. I didn't want this angst in my group. I didn't want people to be upset with being a part of our raid. What do you guys do? He's a good friend. What do you do? Think about your close friend, but like he's clearly a problem. What do you do? Change job. It's not the job, right? It's not the job. After all that time, it's not the job. Some people are just terrible. It's, the, it's a fact, unfortunately. Some people are terrible. 
They're always going to be terrible. You can try your hardest, and they'll always be terrible. Sacrifices have to be made. Needs of the many outweigh the few. It's really tough when it's a close friend. <laughs> it's tough. But, I mean, you've got to have that conversation. You could do with some data. They say they haven't got logs or passes to show it's him. But... No point in somebody playing an overpowered DPS that they can't live. Pointless. They won't do anything. <sighs> Absolutely pointless. I don't know, man. That's tough. You have to have the conversation. You've got to do it. <clears throat> I didn't want this in my group. I didn't want this angst in the team. We were friends. I wanted us to just play and clear games together. That's all I wanted. I wanted us to push forward, get better together, make mistakes together. I wanted Mavenar to be good. I learned a lot how to group management and back in those Tibia days. And I was asking in what to do with a lost cause. My friend told me, just kick him, lol. <laughs> just get a better player. His actual words that I remember to this day is, this motherfucker isn't unique. If you guys aren't on the same page, just cut off the limb. Son, it ain't worth your time, got it? Some things in life are like that. But on top of that, this person needs to know they aren't unique, son. They're replaceable. If you don't want to cut him off straight away, just tell him to take a break, to think what he wants from the group and from himself. If nothing changes, you know what to do, son. Bless. This is from your father? That's terrible advice. <laughs> That's from his dad. <laughs> That's from his... To be fair, his dad essentially ran a sweatshop, so maybe not that surprising. Good advice. Just chop it off, son. Just chop it off. Uh, yeah, it could be a bit more delicate when dealing with friends, I think. I think we can add a little delicacy to it. That's not a problem. But I was 15... I wasn't prepared for that yet. There must be potential in him. There must be. I wanted to make Mavenar good. To be somebody people were happy about seeing. Heaven's Ward was right around the corner. And I had to make Mavenar a better player. I had an idea. I asked, Mavenar, have you ever tried another job? He was baffled with the possibility of even existing. He's basically, he was basically like, you're telling me that I can go endgame with other things with you guys? I wanted to give it a try since our scholar wanted to go ninja, so I rushed every single dungeon. There wasn't duty finding or relets. We had to get one by one to level up doing fates, quests, but we made it. We made Mavenar into a scholar. Level 50, shiny, radiant, and beautiful. But he had no gear. I wasn't worried. I just told him to train a lot. I did the same things I did with his Dragoon. Spreadsheeted it out, every single thing, and gave it to him. Heaven's Ward dropped, and soon after, the first tier. The Static Breakers. I remember you, Living Liquid, Pepsi Man on crack, with a new mode that they tested in the past, but now being official for all tier, Savage Mode. The normal mode was super easy, so no problem at all then. But then came Savage. I've seen Mavenar into extremes and normal raid, but now it was getting fucking real. I wanted to try world first. Right. Okay. <laughs> I mean, set your sights high, right? As close as you can get. Uh... <clears throat> I mean, aim high, baby. Aim high. See how it plays out. You never know. Aim high. It could be good. The servers opened, and we got in there straight away. Mavenar was a beast. I don't know what his problem was with Dragoon, but as a scholar, he was a legend. Everyone was amazed by how this player went from a rock to a solid god tier. Nice DPS. Heals were on point. Dots and so on. He was crisp. Our entire team rose on the back of him we're gonna make it it turns out a3 savage was a disgrace it was unbelievably miserable living liquid was the boss the famous pepsi man a lot of groups were disbanding but not ours sadly we only cleared a3s in the second week but we still had a chance a4s had not died yet 
But when the 34 day hit, 34 days, the world first was reached. Did it take 34 days to kill A4S? No way. No way. Well, this isn't even Alex, right? A4S. Gordius was really bad. I can't remember what Gordius looks like. I've killed it uh, back in the day. Gordius Alexander. What did he look like? Alexander Gordius. Uh, it was the static breaker. Uh, I haven't got a picture of it. The Manipulator. The Manipulator. Uh... Who was it? The Burden of the Father. That one. I need a picture. Oh yeah, the big machine. Yeah, 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 yeah. With the two big, the two legs. Yeah, I remember. Burn of the father. Yeah, the four stumpy leg boy. I can't quite remember the mechanics at this point, but I remember seeing. I remember fighting it. <clears throat> Thirty-four days. The world first was hit. We only got the clear a full twelve days later, but Mavenir, he was there for us. He never missed a single raid and he played perfectly every time. He was good. His redemption was made. I stuck with that same group to this day. Mavenar is still our scholar. We have yet to ever get a world first. But I tell you now, we held together despite what my father said. And we still clear Savage week one and ultimates in four to five weeks. I want you to know that sometimes all you need is a little change. A little love and a little care. And that absolute turd biscuit who's been holding you back can turn into something better. <sighs> why would a dra why would you be so bad at Dragoon that you take like 20% extra damage using bad spells and die to everything? But you're fine with a scholar. Dragoon lag? <clears throat> No melee brain. I mean, I understand using a DPS cooldown. Let's let's not forget that. But if it was killing me every time, I would definitely not do that. It's a lifestyle. You think it's like a Dragoon problem? Is this more of a motivational message to our Dragoon brethren out there? That there's still hope. There's still a chance. Crushed dreams. Oh, I like the sound of some crushed dreams. All we need to do is believe, friends. If we can believe, we can make dreams come true. That's the reason they reduced animation lock for a Dragoons. Okay. Oh, this is a short one. Crushed dreams. Let's get some crushed dreams up. With a K. I assume this is an ironic title. Crushed dreams has been sent in by our author here. Uh, and does not feature a name. Okay. Mavenar the legend can take a little break for now. Crush dreams. Preacher! And to the gamers in the chat. I've been dying to write you in drama time for years, but I wasn't sure what to enter. I kept trying to think of the many, many awkward moments I've had over the years. Or toxic raid groups. Or any other entertaining social interactions I've had in the online world. But what I totally forgot, because I didn't want to think about it again, was the legend of my own fucking stupidity. Honestly, a lot of the drama stories are not usually revolving someone else. I happen to think that a good portion of the stories we receive are actually the people who did the stupid things. <laughs> I think that's going to happen. <clears throat> I wish to tell you a tale about a brand new World of Warcraft player and his own crushed dreams. I want to take you back to the original, the OG Wrath of the Lich King. I was in high school and after months of playing on my friend's account... I managed to convince my mom and pop to let me have my own. I was so ready for this. I had my own character, my own playtime, my own PC. I was ready to delve into the wonders of Azeroth. I sat at the server screen, forgot what server my friend played on, and guessed. 
<clears throat> of course. <laughs> if only there was a way of reaching people to ask questions. If only there was a way of gathering this information. Of course, I guessed I got it wrong. I didn't find out until I was level 25, which was practically the biggest commitment I'd ever had in my life up until that point. <laughs> I told him it was impossible for me to re-roll. I had already put in so much effort into my brand new character. There's no way I could restart. But he engaged something I like to call Turbo Bro Mode. He needed to level up a Horde character anyway. So he came to my server. Legend. Yo, whoever that is, fucking well played, sir. Well played. Don't worry about it. I get it. I'll come and help you out. It's all good. I'll come over to your server. What an absolute ledge. <laughs> Let's fast forward then. My friend is leveling to catch up to my dumbass, and I've made it to Northrend. I leveled my way through the Vrykul and the Scourge and was cruising at a good speed. But then I hit level 75 and I entered Sholazar Basin. Little did I realize that I had just sealed away the entirety of my summer break. Sholazar Basin? Sholazar Basin was the place we all left till 78 because you could get two levels in like an hour in Sholazar Basin. It was ridiculous. Sholazar Basin was godlike for its first half and then the back half sucks. It's really slow. Rep grind? Maybe? I don't know. <clears throat> if you were power leveling, Sholazar, you left till 78, and then you went in and you just smashed it with being slightly higher level, and you just capped so quickly. So, I was playing a hunter because I was shit, so of course I was. That's fair. In fact, I'm still a hunter today, but for different reasons. I was a hunter because I wanted cool pets, obviously. Naturally, this led me to choose BM, I didn't understand rotations or specs or DPS or anything really, but I learned, <laughs> I did learn BM was shit because some dude made fun of me for playing BM when I tried to leave an Ulduar pug that didn't make it past KT. What's KT? Oh, he must mean XT. Yeah, I, I was thinking Kalthazad. Uh, it must be XT. Oh, God, you didn't get it past XT? To make matters worse, Preach, this was when ICC was already out. <sighs> that's kind of sad. That's that's really grim. <laughs> so, <laughs> Jack's right. But how? How is that possible? How is that? I mean, that's after you've got LFD as well, which means you're all in overpowered gear. That's when the dungeon finder was out and the ice crown dungeons were out. You're all wearing crazy overpowered gear. Now, getting back on point and forgetting my terribleness. <clears throat> cool pets were one thing. Rare pets were another thing entirely. I started to read Petopia, not a furry book. I grew a bit obsessed with a specific pet green t-rex who stalked the depths of the sholazar jungle i needed it i needed it bad he was big he was green he was fucking awesome and he was also a level 75 elite i needed him I should point out that my favorite movie of all time is Jurassic Park. As a youngster, I used to watch it at least two to three times a day or whenever I had chance. And God, when the T-Rex would come running out, it drove me wild. I... <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that T-Rex. Mm. I needed that dinosaur so bad that all of my leveling... Came to a screeching halt. Oh, you still haven't capped. Wait, you were trying to lead a pug? Or maybe you learned the BM thing after. Oh, I've seen my kids watch Frozen like three times. I just don't get it. I just don't get it. I needed it. I needed it so bad that all of my leveling came to a screeching halt. 
This was the start of my spawn camping. The longest spawn camping I have ever experienced in all my times gaming. Of course, I found King Crush. I found him plenty of times. He was a big ass T Rex. He wasn't exactly subtle. Add this with my cool rare scanner blaring horns, and I was seeing this dude two to three times a day. This was, of course, because I had set up camp in my room. I was truly on a hunt for a legendary creature. So, if I was seeing this thing two to three times a day, what was taking so long? Well, let me paint you the picture of how I became a complete degenerate. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Again, I remind you all I'm a new player. I don't understand half of what my abilities do. And again, I was level 75 and Crush was a level 75 elite. I was also playing alone since all of my friends were many levels below me due to my server fuck up. Then there was King Crush's abilities in general. He was an absolute criminal level beast. He hit like a truck. Everything was cranked up to 20 taking me down in three or four swipes. And on top of that, he had fear, which would always interrupt my ability to try and tame him. This thing killed me dozens. Dozens of times. I'd be screaming on general, do not kill Crush as I ran back from the graveyard. Of course, wow being wow, this only caused more people who had no interest in killing Crush to kill him and then slash laugh and fly away. I would then sit for hours, wait, find it, die again immediately, and repeat. I tried parting with a healer. A guild had adopted my lonely ass, and one faithful shaman always came to try and help. She would earth shield me and heal, but the aggro would always swap to her, and we'd fail. We'd run around like greased up pigs in freehold for like 10 to 15 minutes before some other players swooped in and just killed it in a few seconds. A few times I had to watch with a floppy dick in my hand as other hunters just tamed it in front of me. But I was desperate. And I was still going to keep trying. By now, it was late July, early August. I had reached level 76 or 77 through passively killing stuff next to where Crush would be. I'm, of course, on my hunt for King Crush. And dying to crush day in, day out. To make this story more ridiculous, I went and tamed King Crush just for the intro to the Hunter BM guide. It took me about two minutes. I wanted a scene of a dinosaur chasing somebody. So I just went down and tamed King Crush and then just... <laughs> in about two minutes, I was like, oh, what's a cool intro for the BM Hunter guide? I'll just go and grab, grab King Crush. And I just got down there and just tamed it and was like, there it is. I never used it ever again. I used it literally just for an intro. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I'm searching for Crush and dying to Crush. Day in, day out. And I have it down to a science at this point. Nobody dies faster to Crush than I do. <laughs> That's amazing. I have gotten every other rare in the region on lock. I know where they're all set to spawn and where... Or at least I had convinced myself that I was now the knowledge master of the area. I had tamed Lokanak, the cool spirit leopard. Atona, the blue parrot, as I did my rounds. If anything spawned that wasn't Crush, I would yell in general to other hunters to help them get their rare. And a few of them returned the favor and tried to help me get Crush. And I say tried. And I kept failing. <laughs> it got so bad that I kept a notebook... A real life notebook, not notepad in game, a notebook where I jot down the timestamps to make my own schedule of spawns. Hey, Arthur. You want to come and hang out? I can't. I can't leave my room. It's 3 p.m. Crush is spawning. No, I can't be there for six either. Crush is spawning. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow I can come and see you, but not right now. Crush is spawning. Honestly, you might think I'm being ridiculous or dramatizing this. 
I actually had this conversation several times with my friends. But I wasn't going to give up. And it would always be the same. Crush stomped the shit right out of my butthole all the way to deep home. He'd fear me. Then someone else would kill him. Someone else would tame him. Sometimes I just stood there in a field of mammoths. Watching his green tyrant stomp around. Knowing there was nothing to do. But watch him walk by. It was in August now and I'm feeling it. I have used my entire summer vacation. In my room. On my own. Chasing a dinosaur. I decide <laughs> maybe it'd be a good idea to cap my levels. Yeah. Yeah. You know, how, I mean, I leveled in 28 hours in Wrath of the Lich King. It was really easy. <laughs> Stupidly easy to level in Wrath. Uh, it takes me about another week and a half to cap and get some gear. Of course, in between flying back to check on Crush. I'm going through the Crystal Song Forest when my guildie is yelling in the green that Crush is up. I zip over on, decked out in my level 80 blues. The shaman friend heals me and I get to taming. And I did it. First time. Just like that. I just tamed it. In barely any time of just being capped and wearing a little bit of gear, I captured the white whale. And then everything stupid that I had done up until this point. The lost summer. The hours and hours I had stayed up late with burning red eyes dawned on me. I'm the biggest fucking moron who's playing this game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. To be honest, you sound a lot like me when I do a challenge in a game that clearly you're supposed to go away and get an extra ability for. I don't know, like the gliding challenge. But there I am for a good two, three hours. Laser focused on getting it done. Just saying, it happens from time to time, right? You want the thing, you know that you could go do the thing and it would make it easier. But just if I just wait this time, I can have it now and it's easier. Do I regret this decision? It was so long ago. Many, many years at this point. I still am not sure if I'm emotionally ready to, <laughs> to answer that question. So instead, I want to leave you with how I feel about it now. For the low, low price of an entire summer vacation in your teens, I earned myself PTSD every time I hear the Sholazar bass of music and a green T-Rex that I didn't even end up using for very long. He now collects dust in my stable. Don't do this. Thank you for reading, and I hope you have some uh, laughs at my noob misadventure. I mean... You got a story out of it, right? There's that. That's pretty cool. Yeah? You got a, you got a little tale about it. You got... <laughs> oh, God. oh, what do you mean? Oh, what a dipshit. The fact that you didn't passively cap just killing stuff, waiting for it to spawn, is also just ridiculous, by the way. You must have literally just sat... You must have literally just sat and waited for it for like hours. You're those people. I see these people all the time. Camping something. And instead of doing anything productive at all at the time, they just sit there. Bex, is this a real website supporter? Or is this a name that you think is funny to include into drama time? <clears throat> None of these names are real. Halix Happy Turtle Estrella Fort Kingpin Condor. None of these names are real. These are all fake. These are all absolutely fake names. Oh, very real Happy Turtle Fort Condor. Yeah, yeah, very real names. Yes, they are. Uh huh. I want to see the website print out. Mm hmm. I, f I think this is a scam, and there must be a reason she's done it. The first ones are... Oh, Halix, Australian and Kingpin. They needed surnames. Okay, Bex has added the surnames. Not a scam. 
fine. It's all fine. Hello, Preacher! Hello, Bex, and hello! This is a wonderful chat. This is my first time ever writing to Drama Time. I've watched for ages, and I love the show. I tend to watch the show often with my partner. He's all the way in North Carolina, while I hail from good old Scouse land. Do you know this is a true story? That the Liverpool accent is considered so bad that even though all of FF16 utilizes very British accents, including Geordie, that Liverpool does not feature. That's a fact. Just letting you know. Just letting you know that even in Japan, they consider the Liverpoolian accent to be poor. They even included the Welsh and Devon. Devon. Just letting you know. And Cornwall. They're in there. <clears throat> this juicy piece of drama comes from over in FF14. More specifically, though, the Bosnian Southern Front. Let me give you some context. I had to take a big ass break from FF14. I played a lot in the past with my ex who lived in Seattle. <laughs> Why are you so international? like some sort of weird jet setter my ex lives in seattle my current fellow lives in north carolina the hell after a while i wasn't really enjoying the content i was playing just to do something with him i wasn't really uh i had no clue what i was doing i was just that warrior main who insta pulled bosses killed them then left to the next one i did quite a bit of high tier content when i pl uh, when i played believe it or not However, when Heaven's Ward came around, I realized I was only playing to enjoy time with my ex. And I could be doing something more interesting instead. Five years later. I got the itch to return. FF, I was steaming through content. Catching up, finished Heaven's Ward, Stormblood, and ended with the Shadowbringers. As Endwalker just hadn't been released yet. Through that whole time, the common theme was, Pull all the things! Wall to wall, baby! And that wasn't just me doing the doing that either. Whenever a tr whatever trial or raid I joined, since it was a normal raid, no savage, people would just insta pull. This might not sound too relevant, but I promise you, it's important to understand. I am an avid Hrothgar fan, and one nasty habit I have is to call any Hrothgar I see anywhere a furry. Now raise your gavels, because I am a furry myself. So the irony is typically fun. Well, I mean, I'm joining in with that too because I don't understand it. There you go. <laughs> I'm joining in. I'm jumping on that train. I don't get it. And it creeps me out. I'm not going to lie. It does. It creeps me out. You do you. But uh, it creeps me the fuck out. <clears throat> I think, you know what the problem is? Furry community. Every video that's released of a member of your community is doing something fucking weird. The one that hits the mainstream. Like, I, I, you know, that's, that's your problem. You've got a bad marketing. You've got a marketing issue. You have a, you have a marketing issue, for sure. There's a marketing problem there. It's, uh, it's almost like propaganda going out. <clears throat> I met quite a few people this way. Some of which are my current best friends. Some of which get super defensive. Some just scream guilty to me, honestly. These friends introduced me to Bosnia. We're currently, we're currently on the southern front. Zadnor isn't out just yet. And I sunk my teeth in. I'm not surprised. Bosnia is awesome. Recommend to anybody who's not been there. I start going to complete degen on this content. And eventually I make it to rank 7-ish. I can't remember the exact max level. Either way, at the end of the zone's ranking system, you unlock the ability to join an alliance raid of sorts. So of course, I'm on a damn roll. I go into the first Castrum Lacus Litor critical engagement I can. I am ready. Axe swinging, we go in. And we're waiting for the raid to start. A nice six minute timer. And I am itching for that clock to hit zero. As, so <laughs> as soon as it hits zero, I pull everything. Now, if you haven't done this before, you need to have roughly equal teams. There's a team that goes up, a bottom team. You need half of the instance to go up, half of the team to go bottom. Give or take a few. Both of the bosses have to be pulled and killed close to each other. We wipe, and I don't know why. My party doesn't say a word, and I don't have my shout chat on. So I assumed it was just a thing where someone didn't do a mechanic and whatever. 
As soon as the count hits zero again, off I go, pulling all the fucking things. Now everybody is insta leaving. I check my shout chat. Apparently, I'm the problem. They've been screaming at me. I'm reading through and the guilt I start to feel is immeasurable. I know I'm 100% guilty here. I can't defend myself. I fucked up. But rather than pussy out and leave, I decide to apologize and take it on the chin. End of the day, it was me who was screwing them up. I could learn from this experience, and I did. But one guy in particular was not happy. I stayed in the same instance, and most of the people were really chill. Happy to explain the mechanics to me, why I have to wait, and so on and so forth. But one guy, Kingpin Condor, couldn't let that happen. He is shout chatting every five minutes like a damn, damn timer. Don't run this raid with Halix, Happy Turtle. I tried to defend my case, but of course he doesn't care. Five minutes later, he says it again. Do not run CLL with Halix, Happy Turtle. I stayed in the instance until the instance died. He never stopped shouting this message. Which honestly, I kind of started to admire him for in a weird way. <laughs> I thought that was it, honestly. If it was, this wouldn't, of course, be here in drama time. This story so far was just a typical bit of dumb raid drama where I made a little mistake and learned from it. Something to learn from, but no more, and time went on. I cleared the raid the next day with my newfound information. I thought that was that. I had some minor burnout from the game until three months later, I got a message from one of my friends. I called a furry on Telegram. It was a screenshot. I opened it up, and this is what I see. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Uh, what we have here is a screenshot from a raid weeks later. Don't do CLL with Halix Happy Turtle. People questioning, like, what the fuck is going on? Care to explain? And then the person did explain. Pulled during the setup and we wiped. Three months later. He was still going three months later with spamming them. Honestly, I mean, there's an impressiveness to it. <laughs> North America classic. <laughs> now, this surprised me to no end. I hadn't even logged into the game in about two months. And I get a screenshot from a friend who was as bewildered as I was. Now, you can imagine how much it pissed me off. Now, the random third party confused me too. I didn't know them. Why were they describing what I'd done? So let's call this person Australia. Anyway, let's explain. I decided to log back into the game. I used the beautiful player search function to find out that Forever Madge Kingpin isn't online right now. However, Australia, the rando who was explaining my what I had done, was also there. Was online. They're in Bosnia. And so I figured I'd go and have a word because this was petty as hell. And I wanted to sort it out. I log into the first Bosnia instance. Check the members list and Australia isn't there. So I leave, re-instance, and they aren't in the second one either. I must have done this about five times, then said to myself, all right, one must go. Bingo. And below Mike, I've included the screenshots of this encounter. Oh my God. Okay. I will read this. <clears throat> Our author's voice. Yo, can you please stop with the constant spam two and a half months after a mistake? Getting DMs from my friends showing you and Archlord spamming don't run with author is hilarious, yet beyond petty. I don't know what you're talking about. Who are you? Like, mistakes happen in raids. Learning from them happens. And that's some pretty petty stuff to be saying two months later, Lamau. I do hope I'm wrong, to be honest. But you're the only one on that name. I wasn't spamming anything. Someone in my castrum run said, don't run with Happy Turtle. And because my party wiped to an early puller, I figured that was you that wiped us. I didn't see you in the instance list. 
So I thought you'd left. Oh, I figured you two were partied up. My apologies laughing my ass off. Now, this legit happened like two months ago and they're still spamming about it. I'm actually so sorry for the misunderstanding. I had no idea. Okay. I'm sorry for going off on you. <laughs> Having your name dragged two months after a mistake is pretty messed up. I wanted to get it sorted. Okay. Well, we've resolved it with one of the people. I won't lie, preacher. I felt pretty shit after this. But that didn't mean I was done. Not yet, at least. I had to go on the lodestone. I knew this was all from just one, one person now. I found out their FC. So I go and I pay them a little trip. They were confused by the Hrothgar sitting out front. I whispered asking if they had an FC leader about. See if they could get me in contact with this guy. So we could talk it out. I didn't appreciate what was happening with my name after all this time. The leader was there. The leader heard my qualms and that was the last I heard of it all. I dropped it after that. While I was annoyed at the time, he eventually just kind of laughed it off. I could have fixed it all with a simple blacklist, but this was the only MMO that I played. And my MMO knowledge was extremely low then, low then compared to now. Since then, that person stopped playing. I checked the lodestone out of morbid curiosity. There's still level 80 on every class. That's when I realized they were a giga noob. <laughs> and good riddance to the game. I decided one thing I should do was change my name. Because I had that name from five years ago and it was pretty shit. Halix Happy Turtle sounded as cringe as the name Preach LFW. <sighs> anyway, this gave me a tad more incentive to do it too. It was on the book anyways. I promise you I didn't change it because of this event. As for me, I went to do Savage content in Endwalker. Getting my first clear of PAS. As a paladin of all classes, please buff. Managing a static of my own and doing some on the side with those friends from before. Along with the BF. Don't worry, we aren't that raiding couple. He's got to do his mechanics right. <laughs> I want to let you know. As a final word. <laughs> oh no. As a final word from a real life furry. Hey Throthgar, Hrothgar's in chat. Your furries. You have so many customization options and you chose the furry. It's okay. We're waiting for you with open furry arms, but you're 100% a furry. <laughs> thank you for your time, Preacher. Thank you very much, Bex, for checking my little story. And thank you, Preach Gaming Team, for your hard work. Well, there you go. You got told. There you go. Furries are the furries. That'll bring us to the end for today. But we are streaming again in the morning with some FF16. We'll be live from probably like 10 a.m. I'm going to get my stuff done in the morning so we can chill and relax. My wife, my wife, wife. My wife is away with my family. So we've got all day to game tomorrow. So we will be here. I'm just not going to get up giga early or anything like that. That's not going to happen. But have a great day. Make sure you check the highlight, uh, the VODs channel. We have a thing up of how you can get all the Twitch chat replay in there for those of you catching up on our VODs. We know it's been an issue recently. Uh, so enjoy that as well. Please have a great weekend. I'm going to go rest my voice, which is definitely getting crunchy now. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Be good.